different types of resonant circuits used in resonant converters. The circuit is the heart of any resonant converter. Because of them, we can achieve soft switching which reduces switching losses. Understanding different resonant circuits will help us how to choose them for our required application. So let's start to learn about them. Resonance is a phenomenon where the response of an electronic system is maximum at a particular frequency. Let's take an example of an LC circuit. We are providing the AC signal to this circuit with a specific frequency. For that frequency, we'll get some response at the output. But when we tune this voltage signal at some particular frequency, then the response of the system will be maximum. This phenomenon is resonance in the resonant circuit and the frequency is called the resonant frequency. When we see the LC circuit, both inductor and capacitor have the ability to store the energy. Even if we remove this supply, the inductor will supply the current to the capacitor and the capacitor will get charged. After that, the capacitor will provide the same energy to the inductor. This energy will get transferred between capacitor and inductor. This back and forth transfer of energy create oscillation at the output. If we see the response of the circuit, it will look like this. The current varies as per the frequency and at the resonance frequency, it gives peak current because the total impedance is minimum. If the operating frequency of the converter would be less than the resonant frequency, the dominant impedance of the converter would be a capacitive impedance. And we have seen in our power factor video that when the load is capacitive for the AC circuit, then the current flow through the circuit would be leading than the voltage. Now, if the operating frequency is higher than the resonant frequency, then the dominant impedance would be the inductive impedance. And in that case, the output current would be lagging in the circuit. This phenomenon is very helpful for selecting the converter frequency as well as in the zero voltage switching and zero current switching of the converter. If we change the value of the load, then the response of the circuit would change as well. So there would be different resonant curves for different load resistance. There are different possible resonant tank combinations starting with basic series resonant parallel resonant and notch resonant circuits, which are known as the fundamental resonant elements. Parallel resonance is formed with at least one inductor and one capacitor. One of these two elements is in parallel with the output and the other element is series connected between the output and input. Basic parallel resonant elements and their gain curves are like this. Around the resonant frequency, the voltage gain can be very high. The series resonance on the other hand has two resonant elements connected in series and cascaded between the input and output. When we see the response of this converter, it looks like this. And as we have seen, the response of the converter depends on the output load as well. At the resonant frequency, the impedance of the series resonant circuit becomes zero, hence the input to output gain is unity. Other than the resonant frequency, the input to output gain is less than unity. Not resonance is formed either with an LC in parallel and placed in series between the input and output or LC in series and it is placed in parallel with the output. The parallel NC not resonant element becomes an open circuit at the LC resonant frequency, therefore the voltage gain becomes zero at the resonant frequency. The cascaded LC not resonant element becomes a short circuit at LC resonant frequency, and it leads to zero gain at the output at the resonant frequency. These are the basic fundamental resonant circuit topologies. There can be different type of resonant circuits. If you only take two element resonant circuits, there are eight possibilities and out of those, only these four are truly resonant circuits that can be used in resonant converters. 
we have already seen the use of such resonant circuits in the resonant buck converter. If we consider the three element resonant tank circuits, there are so many possible resonant tank circuits. But let's consider the most common circuits used such as LLC resonant circuit or LCC resonant circuits and their frequency responses. These type of resonant circuits are widely used in isolated resonant converters. We'll see about these resonant circuits in detail in coming videos. A resonant converter can achieve soft switching on its switching network. So it is important to understand the necessary and sufficient condition for soft switching. In three element resonant converters, it is easy to achieve zero voltage switching than zero current switching. We have already seen about the soft switching, zero voltage switching and zero current switching in one of our previous videos. Please click on this card above to know more about it. In ZVS, the voltage across switching element must go to zero before it turns on. Take a MOSFET as an example. There should be a flow of current in the circuit to completely discharge the MOSFET output capacitor energy before the MOSFET is turned on. And that's how we can achieve zero voltage switching. Because the MOSFET parasitic capacitance take quite amount of time to discharge. There are some conditions which are needed to achieve ZVS on MOSFETs in switching network. First, we need to ensure a current is present during the turn on transient to charge or discharge the output capacitor, which can be ensured by making the resonant tank an inductive dominant impedance in the desired operational frequency range. When the resonant tank is inductive, the current is lagging. Therefore, the switch network output current is non-zero during the turn on transient. An inductive resonant tank ensures the MOSFET output capacitor be charged or discharged by the resonant tank current. So we need to ensure the energy stored in the resonant tank is larger than the energy stored in the MOSFET output capacitors, so that the resonant circuit could discharge the MOSFET parasitic capacitances and the voltage across them would be zero. To achieve this, we need to provide sufficient dead time between two switching elements. If all of these conditions are met, while using three element resonant circuit, we can ensure the ZVS is achieved on all of the MOSFETs inside the switching network. Well, I hope you understood a little bit about the resonant circuits. Next time we'll see how these resonant circuits are used in high power isolated resonant converters. Till then, stay tuned. I have added all the references related to these circuits in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.